when I started this channel almost, what, 10 more years ago now, you were probably a different person. I certainly know I was. Some of you were teenagers, still getting through high school. Others were in their 20s, 30s. Now you've settled down, had kids, got divorced, got remarried, started new careers, or have been through a few of them. The question that I would like to ask, knowing that you've changed so much, is do your games still cater to you? And should they at all? The other folks are all here. In the background, you'll see some gameplay from Witcher 3 and some others as I share some thoughts on better gaming. If you've played the Witcher series, you probably know that Geralt starts out very young. Uh, less so in his actual age, more so in his spirit. He's just out there pursuing a personal vendetta, banging all the ladies. You even get a little card when you do it, which visually is pretty cool, but the gotta bang them all card game probably speaks to some of the immaturity, not just in Geralt's spirit, but also the game's industry at the time. Fast forward to Witcher 2, Assassin of Kings. The storytelling here is well developed, well, more well developed, and has a lot to do with the concept of love, even unrequited, as Yorveth will do anything to protect Saskia, who is actually a golden dragon. Geralt has some more meaningful opportunities for romance, namely with Triss Marigold, Knowing, however, that Geralt is fatefully bound to Yennefer at the same time. In Witcher 2, Geralt is also throwing in with one of the two mainstay factions, and choosing who lives or dies throughout the story has broader implications that weigh heavily on Geralt. Fast forward again to Witcher 3, and the way that Geralt is represented is even more mature than the two previous games. Geralt has an almost singular focus on finding and protecting Ciri, the closest thing that he could ever have to a daughter. And what I think is most endearing is that even through this, you're making the kinds of decisions that a father would make. How much do you restrict the freedom to ensure your child's protection? How much do you trust that they can handle themselves? When looking back, The Witcher came out in 2007. Witcher 2 came out in 2011. And Witcher 3 came out in 2015. That's an eight-year spread. Time enough to get a college degree, start a job, quit a job, do it again a few times. And also time enough for the industry to evolve drastically between them. The person you were when you, possibly, played Witcher 1, you may no longer be in Witcher 3. Witcher, of course, not the only game to do this. When you look at Kratos from the God of War franchise, very similar experience. Kratos is much older now, looking after a child. He's no longer that spry, reckless, well, kind of reckless, seemingly invincible person that they once were. They're trying to control their temper. They're trying to learn restraint. And their priorities have shifted. So, should our games evolve with us as we get older? It comes down to target market, of course. The people that those games targeted when they were eight years ago were us. And now, our priorities, our responsibilities have shifted as well. So if you want to recapture us as an audience, you create characters that we can attach ourselves to. Not every franchise does this. Star Wars, as an example, continues to cater very strongly to a younger audience, regardless of how old that IP actually is. Well, it does a lot of things for a lot of different audiences, but it's Star Wars. You get the point. There is, however, a particular type of game that seems to be in a bit of a strange spot when it comes to this concept of evolving with us. And that is basically every large live service game that I can think of. So that's Planetside 2, World of Warcraft, EVE Online, Warframe, etc., etc. These games are kind of forced to grow with their aging communities, but it's almost always approached from a mechanical perspective. Unlike The Witcher or God of War games where you can skip forward in time both in-game and in real life, each new release reconnecting us with the new values and perspectives of an audience that has grown older in tapping into the nostalgia and the fun time that they used to have with the earlier games, 
But live service is a whole different animal. As a community ages in a live service game, they're going to overcome the learning curve. They're going to optimize the fun out of the game. And eventually they'll become embattled with each other over which way you should be playing the game and which way is wrong. You see this in nearly every large live service game. In this case, the developers are stuck in a bit of a strange position because they need to cater to these elder players by developing usually end game content or new compelling updates. But a game can only continue to thrive so long as you're bringing in new players. Those two groups, new players and elder players, now have opposing ideas on what it means to play the game. And the developers are placed in a lose-lose situation until they can develop a new title and hopefully clear the board and put everyone back on the same playing field. That being said, the question that I'm interested in hearing the answer to, because I genuinely don't know, is if you had to choose, do you think that a game should grow with its player base, or do you think that a player base should outgrow its game? I'll post a poll that you can respond to and link it in the video description as well. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.